guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and this is Icons of Horror Hammer Films. That's right, the legendary British studio is the focus of our Icons of Horror. Before I go any further, I want to thank the Serial at Midnight Patreon community for voting for this very video. This exists because of their vote. They had a choice as to what the next Icons of Horror series entry would be. There are four previous entries. This is number five. They chose Hammer Films, so thanks to the Serial and Midnight Patreon community. You know those names you see at the beginning of every video that say Patreon Rockstars? They don't just get their names in a video. They get to actively uh, vote for the course of future Serial and Midnight episodes. So, very cool. Also very cool to be talking about Hammer Films. You know, this is going to be sort of a celebration. It's not going to necessarily be strictly focused on physical media, though we'll talk about that, nor is it a review episode. Uh, I'm not going to go through every Hammer Films entry because that would take weeks. <laughs> I'm just going to celebrate what I love, you know, tell you what I love about Hammer Films. And it's also interesting because Hammer Films is so closely associated with horror. We're giving them their own icons of horror entry, but they were not just a horror studio. I can't think of another studio that had other kinds of movies, but it's most synonymous with horror, uh, other than Universal. Universal on those early monster movies, I'm talking about Dracula, Frankenstein, The Wolfman, uh, Invisible Man, those are really, in a lot of ways, the foundations of modern horror. And it's interesting that Hammer, some 25 years later, comes along and they take those same characters and inject new life into them. Dracula, you know, there's a great Wolfman movie, The Curse of the Werewolf with Oliver Reed. All the Dracula stuff with Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing is the Van Helsing character. The Frankenstein movies, also with Peter Cushing as the, uh, the not so good doctor. Um, the Mummy, they have a Mummy movie. They really made, uh, they took those characters from Universal's foundational horror and they brought them forward in time and threw in all the exploitation elements that they could. First of all, they're in color, which is wonderful, but then of course that red, red blood <laughs> and bosoms, anything they could throw in there that would please the audience and get those butts in seats, they did. And that's really, I think that's the key to Hammer's success is that they were a relatively low budget studio. They had, they, you know what? They knew how to stretch a pound, let's say that but they they would tend to pursue whatever trend was popular so while they yes hammer horror is its own subgenre of horror but they made so many other kinds of movies there's the uh you know i have a stack here they they were founded in the 30s and over the next but you know the 20 so years before the horror thing really kicks in the high gear listen we have all sorts of other kinds of movies we have there's comedies film noir there's a whole range of hammer noir these are very sought after and they had really good talent, like interesting genre film names associated with these projects that would bring these noir films to the screen. Do you get more exploitative? Look, this is not hard. One Million Years BC, this is a legendary Hammer movie. Raquel Welch, Dinosaurs, That Fur Bikini. I think The Fur Bikini probably has its own Twitter account. Uh, just give, Hammer just giving people what they want, giving people attractive people in prehistoric times we're no different now we have reality shows where we drop people naked in the middle of the jungle same thing so they were always kind of connected to what people wanted you know adventure movies let's talk about the adventure movies they have pirate movies they have uh uh kind of red scare movies the terror of the tongs that sort of a thing but it's really the horror that i think they're most closely associated with that they're most remembered for and it's wonderful stuff. They're, the Hammer Horror model relied on high atmosphere. I, nobody, no one, no, even Universal, no one brought that same level of atmosphere. Universal movies feel like Universal movies. They exist in Universal Movie Monster Land. Hammer films, they're so English. And that's the thing that I always liked about them is no other movie felt like Hammer. I got it sometimes from Doctor Who as well because lo and behold they were filming on some of the same locations. Uh, because of where the Hammer films, like the home studio was sort of situated, there was this expanse of woods surrounding the, the studio area and you would get uh, these very, it just brought a tone. It's this very specific Hammer Woods sort of a thing. Um, just very English. 
Uh, and that pops up in a lot of, in not just the horror, but the sort of Sherwood Forest, you know, the Robin Hood stuff that they did. Um, this very distinct, very unique English tone. And then, of course, they brought real uh, thespians to the table. You got Christopher Lee. We talked about Peter Cushing. The pedigree of the actor before the camera, the, the, the talent that was being filmed, was uh, a real cut above. Like, Christopher Lee is... He's a regal man. He, well, he was. Rest in peace, Christopher Lee. He was a regal man. Peter Cushing had this distinct quality, this diminutive but powerful authority to him as well. Uh, so incredibly well cast. So there's a lot to love about these movies. You know, it's interesting too because as the Hammer story progresses, things get more and more exploitative as the audience changes. By the 60s, you kind of seen stuff. So... Uh, they're throwing in the nudity. They're throwing in twists on things. You know, you've got your female Dr. Jekyll character. What's going to happen there? They're always pushing the boundaries, pushing the limits. And, of course, by modern standards, it feels relatively tame. But for the time that it took place in, listen, those, uh, like, <laughs> the vampire lovers, that sort of a thing, uh, still, still... Still provocative today. That's what I'm trying to say. Still provocative today, even after all these years. Uh, and then, of course, during the latter years of Hammer, they were still chasing whatever would get audiences to come. So you get like the Kung Fu, the Shaw Brothers element within the, uh, the traditional English horror element. But they always stayed true to the, the, the monster. You know, how many... How many of these movies, how many Dracula movies, how many Frankenstein movies, how many Dr. Jekyll movies? And I, I like the ones that kind of go outside the box, too. I like the ones that get into the psychological horror. I like the ones, The Gorgon, that's one of my favorite Hammer horror movies. And it's, I don't recall a universal Gorgon movie, you know? I think the Hammer kind of did that themselves. And again, super English. And, uh, you know, we don't want to talk about Amicus, really, in this video. But Amicus was sort of a contemporary of Hammer did a lot of the same things, but they kind of poached some of Hammer's talents over the years. Like as time went on, Amicus was like, hey, Christopher Lee, come over here. We can we can make you happy. We got some cash for you. Hey, Peter Cushing, yeah, we'll, we'll sweeten the pot for you. So it's really interesting how they, they kind of, the competition in the marketplace led to stuff that we're still talking about today, things that we still remember. So um, maybe this would just be a good time to talk about some of the uh, the, the rights, the home video era of, of Hammer films, it's really complicated because in the UK, I think a lot of it is held by Studio Canal. Uh, but in, in the United States, it's very, very complicated because those licenses over the years were just put up for bid. You know, some of them went to independent studios. Warner Brothers ended up with a lot of them. Universal ended up with some. Uh, and there's just been different distributors over the years that make like a, a, a comprehensive box set really impossible given the rights so i've done some importing this is my my favorite hammer films import there's a dedicated video for this i recorded that video while i was sick and it shows it was very 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 loopy and punchy in that video but some people say it's one of their favorite because i was so uh so half in the bag this has th this is a slimmer version of a much larger the discs are the same but the packaging for the other set was a lot more elaborate this is the shelf friendly version and these are the movies let me get this in good light so you can see the movies themselves this fluctuates in price i think i paid 20 something pounds for this it was an incredible deal especially for 20 movies this is region locked so you do need a region free player to play this this is dvd this is not blu-ray uh, but the the Blu-ray story, we're in good hands, you guys. Um, Warner Brothers, like I said, they they released some on their own, kind of independently. There was there was a box set, but then these came out uh, separately. You got the Mummy, Taste the Blood of Dracula. There's uh, a few more from this um, the the box set that these appeared in. But then Warner Archive kind of took over at a certain point, and they continued to give us look. We got. Uh, the the movie the Dracula movie that started it all the horror of Dracula this has Michael Goff in it uh, Alfred from the the Tim Burton Batman movies it's Peter Cushing it's uh, um, you know we haven't even talked about the women of Hammer but we could talk about you know what the women of Hammer are just as important as the men of Hammer you've got Ingrid Pitt w women of Hammer have their own 
their own <laughs> their own draws you know the hammer arguably had some of the most beautiful women on the screen um and as i'm thinking about it we also need to talk about the talent behind it. we got terrence fisher as the terrence fisher directed so many uh of the more successful hammer films jimmy sangster was the writer who pinned some of the best hammer movies uh, so I, I hope we didn't get too far away from that. I do feel like the women actors, the female performers are just as important as the men performers and the people behind the camera. You know, there was a team, there was a core, uh, core group of people that really knew what to do. And it was maybe a little bit of a, a, <laughs> an assembly line process. You know, Jimmy Sangster says that he would say, do you want it good do you want it fast or do you want it good and they would invariably the answer would be we want it fast and so that's the that's the inevitable push and pull of art versus commerce always this battle of fast or good <laughs> and fast and cheap you know that's going to win every time but uh but those are the guys behind the scenes alan gibson directed uh, the satanic rites of dracula dracula 80 1972 this is this is a maligned movie for a long time i think it's finally discovering some some modern love and, and on blu-ray i mean there's there really is a lot to love about these movies um we have this from uh, kino lorber kino lorber actually has several hammer films through a licensing deal with uh well, it was 20th Century Fox at the time. I'm not sure how that's going to pan out in a post-Disney purchased Fox world. Uh, the, this is another box set. This is the Universal films that uh, that the Hammer films that Universal distributed in the United States. And so we've got Brides of Dracula, The Curse of the Werewolf. That's the Oliver Reed one. That I really like that movie. It's listen. It's got a lot of logic issues, and it's got some real <laughs> narrative it's got narrative issues as well but with hammer movies like i'm like well okay that's fine i still like what i come for i get and it's the it's the atmosphere it's the performances it's the the women it's the direction it's the tone there's something in indefinable about hammer and it's in all these movies night creatures the phantom of the opera another universal property paranoiac the kiss of the vampire nightmare and the evil of frankenstein so there's a couple of psychological horror films that hammer was kind of experimenting with in the 60s uh, around the time psycho you know psycho is a big hit and it influences so many other uh not not, not copycats that's not the way i want to say that it influences other um it was just influential it, other other movies wanted to be like that this is my old warner brothers Ooh, just about dumped the contents on the floor my old warner brothers hammer box set uh with the snapper cases god i just you know for a long time i hated the snapper cases now i i kind of i'm affectionate for the snapper cases there's just something really uh of the time so it's it's so 20 years ago <laughs> but of course this says dracula has you know let's start here chase the blood of dracula the mummy frankenstein must be destroyed horror of dracula the curse of frankenstein dracula has risen from the grave there's all the arts hammer and the art again leaning into exploitation just showing you so much color there I, I love it i love this stuff uh so that's my warner box set mill creek entertainment we have to talk about um by the way before if, if in case you're wondering here's a paramount <laughs> captain chronos vampire hunter this has a few names it was sold here to us in the united states is captain chronos vampire hunter uh swashbuckling sort of a sort of a daring do errol flynn style vampire movie love it uh doesn't this have uh yeah caroline monroe in it yeah carol we didn't even talk about caroline monroe hammer wonderful hammer lady <laughs> caroline monroe um mill creek entertainment we got to talk about mill creek entertainment because they are doing shout factory is doing great reissues and they're bringing new hammer titles out uh, Mill Creek was there years ago. They were doing these double features. We got, uh, here's the Gorgon. I told you I love the Gorgon so much. The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. These are double feature Blu-rays that go back, I want to say they're about four years old. 2016. Maniac and Die Die My Darling. The Revenge of Frankenstein and the Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. And never, here's these psychological horror. Never Take Candy from a Stranger and Scream of fear 
Uh, and I believe all eight of these are going to be on the forthcoming Hammer Films box set, the 20 movie Blu-ray box set that's going to have a, a documentary from Ballyhoo Motion Pictures about Hammer. It's going to have commentaries for the movies. There has never been, <laughs> never, there's never been a better time to be a Hammer fan, to be a fan learning about Hammer than right now. We're sitting at Ground Central for a an entire revival of Hammer films. Speaking of revival, I do I should mention, you know, Hammer kind of Hammer didn't really survive the 70s. Um due to just the changing audience, the a lot of their stuff was just kind of tapped, like they just did everything they could and they just it, it you know what, for to for they bled it dry. Go with the theme of this video. They kind of bled some of this stuff dry. Uh, the Woman in Black is a revival Hammer movie. After decades, um, what was Hammer kind of re... You know what? Like Dracula in all of the sequels. It re-manifests itself. And The Woman in Black, the Daniel Radcliffe film, that comes along and it really does feel like classic Hammer. Hammer does not have to be stuck in the 50s or stuck in the 60s. Uh, it's a tone, it's a style, it's an approach, and The Woman in Black really captures that incredibly well. Wonderful entry to the Hammer Films catalog. But guys, there's so much. To, there's books coming out about Hammer, there's appreciations, there's these new commentaries, there's what Scream Factory is doing with their, uh, their, new, their new releases, there's what Mill Creek is doing with their reissues and releases. Warner Archive has given us all these films that are in their purview in their catalog on blu-ray i mean it's a wonderful time to be a hammer fan and uh we're gonna be there for it serial at midnight is gonna be there for it i hope you will too so let's do this let's celebrate hammer in the comments of this video what's your favorite hammer movie what was your first hammer movie you know when i come to think of it i think captain chronos vampire hunter might have been my first hammer movie i I, I don't know that I have a memory of Hammer before that. And then, of course, the discovery. This would have been, in, I guess, in the 90s? Uh, the discovery of what that was and, and just realizing, like, oh, this is Hammer. Oh, this is Hammer, too. And then you connect the dots. And then you, you continue to get older and you're like, wait a minute, this noir film was Hammer? This pirate movie is Hammer? Uh, there's just a lot of really cool discovery stuff out there. I want to hear your story. I want to hear where you started and what's your favorite. Let's continue our love of Hammer in the description, in the, in the comments of this video and just keep that discussion going. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out, celebrating Hammer Films with me. Uh, the studio that in many ways is gone, but never forgotten, never, never more loved, I think, than maybe right now. There's such a rejuvenation of this stuff. Guys, thanks so much. Take care. And until next time, I will catch you later.